we actually kind of met through the non-monogamy community. I define this relationship as this is my cohabitating partner and we call each other otters. Yeah. We are primary partners and our other partners are secondary partners. I find it really fascinating. I think about a lot like if I could ever do that and I don't know if I could. I had a threesome with like two friends of mine that I initiated. I decided that it would be cool to experiment with multiple people with like somebody that I really loved and cared about. The queer community has been uh, berated with the idea that our relationships are lesser and that they're actually not up to par in the standard of the you know, heteronormative standard and all of that's bull. One of the topics that um, sexuality and gender scholars have really refined over the last few years and I think even the last few decades has been this question of diversity, of sexual diversity and gender diversity. Uh, and that's true uh, of various different theoretical frameworks. So in my own work, um, I try and combine evolutionary thinking and feminist thinking and theoretical models and frameworks from both. And in fact, one of the topics that I really find exciting is that uh, they are unified by an appreciation and a desire to understand diversity. But I think one area that we haven't paid that same attention to is relationship diversity. And in the last few years, my lab and many others across the world have been asking those sorts of questions. That starting to appreciate that people's romantic relationships come in so many different varieties, that uh, we've got to start to tease that apart to try and understand what are those different varieties, uh, why do they exist, how are they functionally different, and also how do they meet people's uh, desires for what they actually want out of their romantic relationships. Isaac and I have been in a relationship for about two years now and to anyone in the outside world he would be my boyfriend. We don't use that word, we say partner, um, so he's my partner. I also have another partner, Kayla. Isaac and I met Kayla together, we actually like sought her out. Um, we were like on different dating sites because we wanted to have um, different energy. We wanted to explore polyamory a little bit more. We looked at what are the rates of people uh, who have ever been in a consensually non-monogamous relationship. And what we found is in two large samples of single Americans, so we replicated the finding, in both cases it was over 20%, about 121%. So about one in five Americans have at some point in their life been in a consensually non-monogamous relationship. That's pretty high numbers for us to not take account of. There's all sorts of questions that bear on our social networks and our relationship factors. And unless we take seriously that people have diverse romantic lives, uh, that they experience relationships in all sorts of different ways throughout the life course. This isn't just, this isn't just a phenomenon of young people being poly. Uh, we're seeing this happen across the life course of different ages, experiencing, sometimes experimenting, and many times for the lifetime enjoying uh, these different types of relationships. So I think those are, that's one of the more pressing questions that I think uh, we need to really be asking in our research, but also in our advocacy work to understand the lives and well-being of people of different relationship types. One of the questions that I get really excited about in relationship science and, and thinking about people's romantic and intimate lives is this question of what do we think of as success? How are people measuring success? And I think it's such a profound question because uh, as we've been doing our research, we're finding that people have very different answers to what they really think of uh, as a successful relationship. Now, most people often say that their relationship is successful if it's, it's longevity. How long did it last? Uh, but we're starting to better appreciate that maybe, maybe that's not the best question to ask, or maybe we need to rethink what we conceptualize as a successful relationship. So there are many people who have a great summer fling, and it's successful for what it was. Is it someone that they stay with their whole life? Is it someone they marry, they have kids with? If that's what they want, uh, maybe not. And but that doesn't mean it wasn't successful. I genuinely think for many more, um, there are other better measures of how we can think about the, the benefits of our relationships. And it helps us to look back on our past relationships and not think of them as failed, but as a series of positive experiences many of us have had.